Airbus A330neo, a name that is no longer strange in the world aviation industry. With its sophisticated design, advanced technology, and outstanding performance, the A330neo has created a fever in the aviation market. Let's analyze the outstanding advantages of this aircraft line in today's film, thereby helping you better understand why it is so popular. But before we start, if you're new, please leave a like and subscribe to help us build this channel and you will also be the first to see our new content in the future. Now let's dive in. Since its first delivery in November 20th, 18, and with more than 120 aircraft in service today, the A330neo family has received a number of incremental improvements. It has increased its maximum takeoff weight from its original certification of 242 tons to 251 tons. It has also achieved certification to the ICAO 2028 carbon dioxide emission standard. This has been accompanied by a higher max PAX capacity for the A330-900, which has been increased from 440 to 460 seats in a nine across economy class layout. The Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 GP turbofan engine can double the life of its fan blades in operation for more time on the wing thanks to the enhanced durability package. According to a recent announcement, Airbus has announced that from around Q4 2025, customers will be able to receive aircraft with even higher performance and flexibility thanks to the next incremental package called Step 4. This package will focus on improving the aircraft's low speed performance. This is achieved by maximizing lift and reducing drag during the takeoff phase and subsequent climb phase. With the Step 4 package, Operators of this aircraft will be able to benefit from the ability to carry an additional takeoff weight of around 2.6 tons at some airports. While at other, even more limited runways, it will be possible to carry up to 4 tons and all without increasing engine thrust. Airports where such operators can expect benefits include Madrid, Minneapolis, Reunion, Dusseldorf, Bogota, Gatwick, and Mumbai, among others. So what makes this such a dramatic improvement? The first factor is the intermediate flaps of the aircraft. On takeoff, the flap setting selected depends on the available runway length and the engine thrust setting, plus other factors. The aircraft has a total of five flap settings, zero, one, two, three, and full. In general, the higher the flap setting, the greater the associated lift generated during takeoff. However, higher flap settings also naturally create greater aerodynamic drag, which can affect the aircraft's acceleration, especially during the initial climb. Therefore, if runway length permits, lower flap settings are generally preferred. Therefore, flap two is the typical setting, as it provides a good balance between the additional lift required for takeoff and the lower drag for the subsequent acceleration climb while maintaining the required flight path angle. However, to further optimize performance and smooth the transitions between flaps and slats, Airbus has introduced so-called bridging flap positions. These are slotted between flaps one and flaps two, and between flaps two and flaps three, and flaps full respectively. The second improvement is the implementation of a faster landing gear and landing door retract sequence. It should be noted that the enhanced takeoff configurations are combined with another drag reduction measure that reduces the climb time of the first segment. This reduction is achieved through two improvements, shortening the landing gear, retract time by approximately 0.8 seconds, and reducing the landing gear door opening and closing time by approximately 0.2 seconds. The modification includes a new main landing gear, MLG retract actuator, and hydraulic flow control unit, along with a new MLG door actuator. As well as reducing the retract time, the landing gear retract sequence also begins a few seconds earlier after takeoff than on current aircraft. This shorter cycle is achieved through a new automatic landing gear door open function. When an engine failure is detected during takeoff, this function automatically commands the landing gear door to open one second after takeoff. This differs from the current sequence where the door opening sequence begins three seconds after takeoff triggered by the landing gear lever. So do you expect to see these improved machines flying in the skies by the end of 2025? Comment yes or no below in the comments section. In addition, in an effort to enhance the value and appeal of the A330neo to future passengers, Airbus will introduce new enhancements to the aircraft's airspace cabin. Airbus revealed a special full-size A330neo mock-up for the first time at this year's aircraft interior show. 
showcasing proposed new features for the airspace cabin. These include new hero lights and welcome shields, new linings for the interior sidewalls, ceiling panels, and door frames, as well as electronically dimming windows. These new features are expected to be available to customers in 2027 or 2028. While enhancing the overall passenger experience, it also promotes consistency and engagement with the larger A350. The combination of these elements will contribute to a total weight saving of around 100 kilos across the entire aircraft, equivalent to around 10 carry-on bags. At door two, there's the airspace welcome panel. This is the advanced ceiling lighting system with airspace patterning, which will be standard on all new A330. Neo aircraft delivered from Q1 2026. In addition, Airbus will offer the option for airlines to customize. Meanwhile, the new Airspace Hero Light will be introduced as a premium option for the A330neo in 2027. This will be a key differentiating opportunity for an airline in the Doors 1 to Doors 2 area, customizable with 16 million colors and a unique pattern. This is typically a business class area without a central overhead bin set mounted on the ceiling as the Airspace side bins provide sufficient storage. Overall, these intuitive, customizable design elements are the first of their kind on a wide-body aircraft that fits the DNA of the inter-airspace program, as recently introduced on the A320 family. Passengers will also benefit from additional comfort as the new sidewalls provide more shoulder clearance at each window seat, as well as more legroom, thanks to a reshaped dado panel on the floor. The new sidewall and dado panel industrial solution will save around 85 kilograms across the entire aircraft, according to Airbus engineering estimates. Meanwhile, the new ceiling panels are also lighter than the previous design, saving a further 10 kilograms across the entire cabin. Both the upgraded ceiling and sidewalls offer a smoother, more seamless appearance than the previous design and can also be retrofitted to the A330 family in service. The design of the new door frame lining simplifies installation and replacement by reducing the number of parts while contributing to a further weight saving of 5 kilos. It also enhances the aesthetic appeal around the door thanks to its refined geometry. Currently, Airbus order book remains skewed towards the A320neo and A350, with backlogs of over 7,650 aircraft to date, respectively. However, the A330neo is finally making its presence felt, particularly with options from Flynas for 30 aircraft. Additional orders from Virgin Atlantic and especially impressive new orders of 20 aircraft from Vietjet Air and 30 from Cathay Pacific. These orders bring the total airplane order book to 360 aircraft with a current backlog of over 200. This also makes Cathay the second largest customer for the A330neo program after Delta Airlines and previously TAP Air Portugal. Of all these new orders, Cathay Pacific is getting a particularly big boost for its stalled A330neo program. As the fifth largest A330 CEO operator, Cathay expects the A330neos to gradually replace its existing fleet of A330 CEOs and classic 777. The A330neo's smaller backlog enables an earlier delivery timeline compared with the 787 and A350. OEMs have struggled for some time to crank up their production rate to go through their backlogs. The backlog, combined with Boeing's quality control concerns stemming from a series of recent failures, means that even if Boeing ramps up production to 10 a month, deliveries won't be until the end of the decade at the earliest. By contrast, A330neo deliveries could start as early as 2028 at a rate of four a month. Looking at it from a long-term perspective, rather than just a replacement for the CEO version, the A330neo is seen as the ideal aircraft for operators looking to expand their networks and operations. Typical examples include TAP, Condor, Cebu Pacific, ITA Airways, and the new entrant Vietjet Air. None of these leading airlines has ever had a fleet of more than 10 A330 CEO aircraft. The introduction of the A330neo not only allows them to expand into the long-haul market, even for low-cost carriers, but also increases capacity on their core routes. It is evident that with continued upgrades, the aircraft is becoming a more competitive widebody. The payload, efficiency, and passenger comfort have increased in line with market demands and sustainability goals. Recent orders from major airlines indicate growing interest. 
Sooner or later, the A330neo will be a strong candidate for network expansion and replacement of aging fleets, especially as production outpaces competitors facing delays and challenges.